Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the December 1st, 2015 regular Piqua City Commission meeting. Um, could you all make sure your cell phones are turned completely off and then stand and join us in the Pledge of Allegiance? Would the clerk please call the roll? Mayor Fess? Here. Commissioner Martin? Here. Commissioner Vogt? Here. Commissioner Wilson? Here. Commissioner Terry? Here. Um, we have a presentation. We do have a presentation, and um, I'll call on Vice Mayor Bill Vogt to make this presentation tonight. Mm -hmm. I'll call on Lucinda Fess to go to the podium. <laughs> <laughs> oh my. I gotta stand up here so I can talk in. Now this here, Lucy, <coughs> is a collage of your career here Beautiful. Beautiful. so I'm going to read this to you a salute to Lucinda Elfes mayor from 1992 to 95 and 2010 to 2015 Lucinda Elfes has served the city of Piqua during her entire career her involvement and dedication to Piqua is legendary her love for the city has been demonstrated for decades as she worked tirelessly to improve the community on various fronts. Lucy served as executive director of the American Red Cross, director of community affairs for the Upper Valley Medical Center, director at economic development department for the city of Piqua, and she's a licensed insurance agent. She has served as a board member for the Pickwood Improvement Corporation, Forest Hill Cemetery, Grow Pickwood Now, and other important organizations. Over the years, Lucy received numerous honors and awards, including the Excellent in Management Award, Salvation Army Others Award, Woman of Excellence Award, and the Coveted Order of George. Most importantly, she served as Pickway City Commissioner for 12 years and mayor of the city of Pickway for 10 of those years. During that time period, the city of Pickway made great improvements and advancements to the downtown, parks, transportation, and utilities. Major capital projects were completed or, <clears throat> completed or initiated during her tenure, such as the Par Service Center, East A Street uh, construction, County Road 25A, Reconstruction, Fort Pickwood Plaza, water treatment plant, and riverfront develop, redevelopment. The city has been recognized with such honors as Bicycle Friendly Community, Trail Town, Playful City USA, Top Workplace, Healthiest Employer, American Public Power Association Diamond Level, along with many other state and <coughs> national awards. For many of the years of service, the city of Pickwood and the Pickway community, the City of Pickway City Commission employees salute you for your commitment and service to this community, and this will forever be appreciated and indebted to you. And my name's on this. <laughs> <laughs> it's got all the commissioners on here, and Lucy, we're going to miss you. I'm going to miss you all too. Thank you.
good to forget Becky. Wow, I hadn't anticipated that. Thank you all so very much. I appreciate it so much. And it's just been my pleasure. And I've got some comments I'll say later. But right now, I want to say that we'll start with our consent agenda. But I want to say that um, last meeting, I think we were 20 minutes. And obviously, you didn't want me to sleep, slip out easy. So this evening, we've got 25 items on our agenda. This will be one to remember. <laughs> yeah, I think so. Um, the, for the first order of business, we have the consent agenda, which is the approval of the minutes from the December 1st, 2015 regular Pickwick City Commission meeting. I move we approve the consent agenda. Second. Moved and second to approve the consent agenda. All those in favor, state aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Consent agenda has been approved. Moving to old business, we do have eight ordinances, seven of which are having their third reading. The first ordinance, number 12 15. An ordinance repealing Schedule A of Chapter 33 of the Pickwick Code and adopting a new Schedule A of Chapter 33 of the Pickwick Code relating to wages of certain municipal employees. Ms. Barton will provide the staff reports on items two, three, and four. Thank you. Um, ordinance number 1215 covers Schedule A. That's the wage schedule that sets the salaries for all non-union positions. Um, the passage of this ordinance will increase those wages by 2% beginning in January. Uh, the union agreements also include a 2% increase beginning in January. Thank you, Elaine. Commissioners, any questions? Anyone in the audience wish to address the ordinance? If right. not, this being the third meet, reading, do I have a motion? So moved. Second. It's been moved and seconded to adopt ordinance number 12-15. Would the clerk call the roll, please? Commissioner Martin? Aye. Commissioner Terry? Aye. Commissioner Wilson? Aye. Commissioner Vogt? Aye. Mayor Fess? <coughs> Excuse me. Ordinance number 12-15 has been adopted. <coughs> Ordinance number 13-15. An ordinance repealing Schedule A-1 of Chapter 33 of the Pickwick Code and adopting a new Schedule A-1 of Chapter 33 of the Pickwick Code relating to wages of certain municipal employees. Um, ordinance number 1315 covers Schedule A-1, the wage schedule that sets the wages for all seasonal, part-time, and temporary employees. Um, over the years, the differential between lifeguards A, B, and C has eroded. <coughs> Um, the passage of this ordinance reestablishes those differentials. Um, with the differentials in place, we hope to be able to recruit and retain lifeguards for the swimming pool. Uh, we've also included differential for the golf course employees and added the position of golf maintenance technician. That's the position that maintains the golf equipment. Thank you, Elaine. <laughs> Commissioners, any questions? Anyone in the audience wish to speak? the ordinance. Could we have a roll call, please? Or could I have a motion, please? Move to adopt ordinance number 13-15. Second. Moved and seconded to adopt number 13-15. Would the clerk call the roll? Commissioner Terry? Aye. Commissioner Wilson? Aye. Commissioner Vogt? Aye. Mayor Fess? Aye. Commissioner Martin? Aye. Ordinance number 13-15 has been adopted. Ordinance number 14-15. An ordinance repealing Chapter 33.08 and enacting a new Chapter 33.08 of the PICWA Code relating to employee insurance. Um, this ordinance will simply update the section of the of 3308 to um, the new benefit year of 2016, beginning in January. Thank you. Commissioners, any questions? In audience? Could I have a motion, please? I move to adopt ordinance number 13-15. Second. It's been moved to adopt ordinance number 14-15. Sorry, 14-15. Yes. 14-15. Would the clerk call the roll, please? Commissioner Wilson? Aye. Commissioner Vogt? Aye. Mayor Fess? Aye. Commissioner Martin? Aye. Commissioner Terry? Aye. Ordinance number 14-15 has been adopted. Ordinance number 15-15. An ordinance amending ordinance number 33-66 relating to municipal, municipal income tax. 
Ms. Holtzapf will provide the staff report on items five and six. <clears throat> Thank you. With the passage of House Bill 5 by the state legislature in December of 2014 and the required creation of a new income tax, Chapter 38, we're here to update the current ordinance with some housekeeping items to keep in conformity with the new tax code, which all begins on January 1st of 2016. Thank you, Cindy. Questions, commissioners? Anyone in the audience? If not, could I have a motion, please? Move, move to move. adopt ordinance number 15-15. Second. It's been moved and seconded to adopt ordinance number 15-15. Could I have a roll call, please? Commissioner Vote. Aye. Mayor Fess. Aye. Commissioner Martin. Aye. Commissioner Terry. Aye. Commissioner Wilson. Aye. Ordinance number 15-15 has been adopted. Ordinance number 16-15. An amended ordinance to make appropriations for the City of Piqua, Ohio for the year 2016. The City of Piqua is required to present and pass the 2016 annual budget by the end of this year. This budget was reviewed by the City Commission in the November um, budget hearings. It has been amended slightly since the last reading for project timings of a couple items and new cost estimates that were just received. Thank you, Cindy. Commissioners. Anyone in the audience wish to speak to the audience? No, do I have a motion, please? I move we adopt resolution or ordinance number 16-15. Second. I have a motion to adopt amended ordinance number 16-15. Would the clerk call the roll, please? Mayor Fess. Aye. Commissioner Martin. Aye. Commissioner Terry. Aye. Commissioner Wilson. Aye. Commissioner Vote. Aye. Ordinance number 16-15 has been adopted. Ordinance number 17-15. An ordinance to vacate a portion of public right-of-way. Mr. Sommer will provide the staff report. This ordinance is in response to a request to vacate a portion of the public right-of-way between Main Street and Wayne Street. Uh, the right-of-way is not currently being used for public purposes and has no value to the city. Uh, it's been through the public hearing proce process through the Planning Commission. The Planning Commission has recommended approval of vacation. Thank you, Justin. Any questions, commissioners? Anyone in the audience have questions on the ordinance? If not, could I have a motion, please? Move to adopt ordinance number 17-15. Second. It's been moved and seconded to adopt ordinance number 17-15. Would the clerk call the roll? Commissioner Martin? Aye. Commissioner Terry? Aye. Commissioner Wilson? Aye. Commissioner Vote? Aye. Mayor Fess? Aye. Ordinance number 17-15 has been adopted. Ordinance number 18-15, this will stand as a second reading for this ordinance. An ordinance creating Chapter 38 of the Codified Ordinances of the City of Piqua regarding municipal income tax. Ms. Holtzapfel will provide the staff reports on items eight and nine. We would request that these item, the uh, readings be waived so that we can pass them tonight. Thank you. With the passage of House Bill 5, as indicated by the state legislature in December of 2014, an ordinance is required to create a new income tax chapter 38, which begins with January 1st of 2016. The major changes are the requirement of a net operating loss carry forward, which will be phased in effect with taxable years beginning after January 1st of 2017. The casual entrance rule goes from 12 days to 20 days, Penalty and interest charges are uniform within all municipalities, and the minimum collection refund amount goes from $5 to $10. Other minor changes incorporated in House Bill 5 were already within our current ordinance. And as indicated, we are requesting approval tonight of Ordinance 18-15, accepting the new chapter to the Municipal Income Tax Code to be in compliance with House Bill 5. Thank you, Cindy. Uh, commissioners, do you have any questions? I move to waive the three reading rule on second. 18-15. It's been moved and seconded to waive the three reading rule on ordinance number 18-15. Could I have a motion, please? Move to adopt ordinance 18-15. Well, we have to vote on that first. Oh, amended. No, we have to vote oh, we on haven't it. voted on the other. No, we need to vote on the three okay. reading rule. Yes. Waiving it. So is that your motion to waive the... Aye. Commissioner Wilson? Aye. 
Commissioner Vote? Aye. Commission Mayor Fess? Aye. Commissioner Martin? Aye. The three reading rule has been waived on ordinance number 18-15. Do I have a motion to adopt the ordinance? So moved. Second. It's moved and seconded to adopt. Ordinance number 18-15. Would could we have a roll call, please? Commissioner Terry? Aye. Commissioner Wilson? Aye. Commissioner Vote? Aye. Mayor Fess? Aye. Commissioner Martin? Aye. Ordinance number 18-15 has been adopted. Moving to new business, ordinance number 19-15. Again, they're asking that we waive the three reading rule on this emergency ordinance. I move we waive the three reading rule on ordinance 19-15. Let me read it first. Oh, okay. An ordinance, excuse me, an emergency ordinance to make appropriations for the city of Pickwell, Ohio for the year 2015. Stop. Any Thank questions? You. Thank you. As we do each year at this time, this is the final 2015 appropriation. The changes to our current appropriation are outlined in Exhibit A. Most of the changes are due to project and grants shifting since the original or amended appropriation. And as indicated, we are requesting that we waive the three readings to have this in place before year end. Thank you, Cindy. I move to waive the three reading rule. Second. It's been moved and seconded to waive the three reading rule on ordinance number 19-15. Could I have a roll call, please? Mayor Fess? Aye. Commissioner Martin? Vote? Aye. Commissioner Terry? Aye. Commissioner Martin? Aye. Commissioner Wilson? Aye. The three reading rule has been waived on ordinance number 19-15. I move we adopt ordinance number 19-15. Second. Second. It's been moved and seconded to adopt ordinance number 19-15. Could I have a roll call? Commissioner Wilson? Aye. Commissioner Vote? Aye. Commissioner Terry? Aye. Commissioner Martin? Aye. Mayor Fess? Aye. Ordinance number 19-15 has been adopted. We're through the first page. Yep. We'll move now to resolution number R-155-15. A resolution authorizing transfers of cash from the general fund to the other funds for the fiscal year 2015. Ms. Holtzapfel will provide the staff reports on items 10 and 11. Thank you. These are companion resolutions to the appropriations that you just passed. The Auditor of State and their Ohio Compliance Supplement requires that the city um, adopt a resolution authorizing all transfers. This one is to authorize the fund transfers in fiscal year 2015 in regards to the final appropriation you just passed. Thank you, Cindy. Commissioners, do you have any questions for the Finance Director? Does anyone in the audience wish to speak for or again for this resolution? I move to adopt resolution R-155-15. Second. It's been moved and seconded to adopt resolution R-155-15. Would the clerk call the roll, please? Commissioner Martin? Aye. Commissioner Terry? Aye. Mayor Fess? Aye. Commissioner Wilson? Aye. Commissioner Vote? Aye. Resolution number R-155-15 has been adopted. Resolution number R-156-15. A resolution authorizing transfers of cash from the general fund to the other funds for the fiscal year 2016. As indicated, this is the companion uh, transfer resolution that uh, supports the appropriations for 2016 as required in the Ohio Compliance Guide. Thank you. Commissioners. Anyone in the audience wish to speak for or against this resolution? If not, could we have a roll call? Move to adopt resolution 156-15. Second. It's been moved and seconded to adopt resolution number 156-15. Would you call the roll, please, Becky? Commissioner Terry? Aye. Mayor Fess? Aye. Commissioner Wilson? Aye. Commissioner Vote? Aye. Commissioner Martin? Aye. Resolution number R-156-15 has been adopted. Resolution number R-157-15. A resolution acquiring the services of American Electric Power to provide professional development training for personnel of the power system in 2016. Mr. Krieger will provide the staff reports for items 12 through 19. Thank you. Uh, this uh, next resolution deals with training for our uh, 
line workers in the power system. 2015 was the first year that we actually had to come to commission for approval for this because typically we don't exceed $25,000. But uh, currently we have five apprentice apprentices in the program, so in 2016 we'll be exceeding $25,000. So uh, we'll need uh, commission approval to uh, complete the necessary training for our apprentice line workers. Thank you, Ed. Commissioners, any questions? Um, do we have any trouble finding apprentices, or do they mostly come through uh, the um, career school? Um, you know, we've actually, here recently, uh, our apprentices have come from other departments in the city. Really? But, uh, before that, we've had uh, a number that came from uh, the off-site training facilities, one in Warren, Count, uh, Warren County. And, uh, and, you know, it really just depends on whether we have employees in the city and other departments that are interested in becoming line workers. But, yeah, we currently have, I think, three of them, or actually four came from other positions in the city for the five apprentices. Which is which, good. Which is not always popular with those departments, but it's not. Yes, <laughs> that's true. <laughs> no, we have a very good group of uh, apprentices in the program right now. Right. And I think that speaks to the quality of some of the employees that we have on staff right. who are able to move into those type positions. So. Mm -hmm. Thank right. you, Ed. Any other questions? Anyone in the audience have questions? If not, could I have a motion, please? Move to adopt resolution R-157-15. Second. It's been moved and second to adopt resolution number R-157-15. Would the clerk call the roll? Mayor Fess? Aye. Commissioner Wilson? Aye. Commissioner Vogt? Aye. Commissioner Martin? Aye. Commissioner Terry? Aye. Resolution number R-157-15 <coughs> has been adopted. Resolution number R-156-15. A resolution authorizing the city manager to apply for city membership to the American Municipal Power Incorporated. It's actually the next four items are items that we typically bring to this last meeting in December after the budget for ne the next year is approved so we can continue services uh, right at the beginning of the year. And uh, the first one relates to our membership in American Municipal Power. As you know, we have a longstanding relationship with AMP. Uh, we're involved in a number of their generating projects. And uh, we would ask for uh, uh, the ability to pay our dues in uh, 2016. Okay. Is there any questions for the power director on resolution 158-15? Anyone in the audience? If not, could we have a motion, please? Move to adopt resolution number R-158-15. Second. Second. It's been moved and seconded to adopt resolution number R-158-15. Would the clerk call the roll? Commissioner Wilson? Aye. Commissioner Vogt? Aye. Commissioner Martin? Aye. Commissioner Terry? Aye. Mayor Fess? Aye. Resolution number R-158-15 has been adopted. <clears throat> resolution number R-159-15. A resolution retaining the services of Cooperative Response Center Incorporated to provide professional customer call answering and dispatch services for the power system. Yes, when the steam and hot water system was set, shut down in the power plant, we no longer had after hours uh, call answering ability. So in 2007, we began using the Cooperative Response Center for call answering, after hour call answering and dispatching services. And they've uh, done a really nice job for us and they've actually held the calls flat since that time. Thank you. Now, do we ever check to see, like randomly check to verify their responses and their, uh, the whole, how do, how do we verify the job they're doing? Yeah, basically every time there is a call, uh, we get a report. It's an email report that we get back and, and our supervisors and management are all in those email chains. So it's real easy to see if uh, response isn't adequate. And they've always done a nice job because things come up and they answer a lot of phone calls and dispatch a lot of calls. And uh, they're always really good about following up and they'll provide everything from voice recordings that you may have with uh, citizens in the city. And we've had in, the, in those years since 2007, I think on, I can count on one hand the number of instances we've had. And uh, even where there have been mistakes, they've worked to, to improve the situation. They, they've done a really nice job. They, and invest in technology over the years and you know what they're able to do in terms of call volume and, and quality is just 
you know, we had two, uh, one employee answering two phone lines in the city before and we really weren't able to do a very good job of answering calls for our customers, so. I remember I had one, one call that I made personally and it was handled very well, so I assume they're all handled very well, but. The vast majority are. Yeah, okay. Anything else, commissioners? Do we get very many calls? You know, it just depends. Uh, thankfully, since uh, the, we had the last big uh, day record windstorm in 2012, mm -hmm. the weather has been, it's been very, fairly quiet. And, uh, so it's usually in a weather event. And yeah, I mean, when otherwise the power goes you'll get off. a, you know, call here or there, a, a small really outage. Cool. You know, we, we don't have a lot of power outages in the city. But, uh, when we do, you'll get uh, one or two or five or six phone calls associated with that. But we, we really haven't had a larger storm event for a number of years, which is good. Yes. Okay. I heard one of the um, commissioners comment, we have a lost squirrel now and then. Do what? We have a lost squirrel one now and then. Oh, yeah, we definitely do that. <laughs> Fried squirrels. That's our number one cause of outages, squirrels. <laughs> Anything else? Anyone in the audience? If not, could I have a motion, please? Move, Move. to adopt resolution number R-159-15. Second. It's been moved and seconded to adopt resolution number R-159-15. Becky, would you call the roll, please? Commissioner Vote. Aye. Commissioner Martin. Aye. Commissioner Terry. Aye. Mayor Fess. Aye. Commissioner Wilson. Aye. Resolution number R-159-15 has been adopted. Resolution number R-160-15. A resolution authorizing the city purchasing agent to purchase number two fuel oil on the open spot market. So the power system owns and operates two uh, combustion gas turbines that we use that uh, not only economically benefit our customers by reducing the power bills, but they also provide an emergency backup source for uh, the city's power system. So each year what we do is we ask for this legislation so that during the year we can go out and at any given time check with three vendors and uh, whoever provide us, provides us with the most competitive price for the fuel for the gas turbines will will fill the tanks up at the appropriate times. So we've budgeted $100,000 for next year. <coughs> Thank you. Commissioners? Uh, is the fuel oil uh, down in price this year? Like every Actually, uh, we, we filled, filled the tanks up, um, I think, when it was late summer, I think. And yeah, fuel prices, natural gas prices, you know, we've all benefited from that. So I think we're in pretty good shape now in terms of uh, <coughs> capacity in our storage tanks. But, um, you know, during the year we run, run the gas turbines for maintenance tests, but we also run them because uh, we're required to because some of our commitments in our, our transmission uh, organization that we operate in. So, and in addition, here just the last few years, we started to do transmission peak shaving, which also saves our customers money, so. So, so we should um, probably see uh, fuel easier to come by uh, if we have to buy it on the market. Definitely, and like I said, when and we cheaper. have, yeah, when we have room in the tanks, like I said, right now I think we're right. in pretty good shape. But as we burn fuel during the year, we always look to find the most economic times to buy the fuel. We try to price that when, you know. Will we ever see uh, uh, the customers uh, get a, a break on our fuel prices? The the regular customers. Because I know this is for the uh, the um, turbines. But, you know, for just our regular. In terms of the electric prices? Mm -hmm. Yeah, right now, I mean, I, Gary since put. Our, the, since our uh, fuel is cheaper. Yeah, I mean, Gary had put together a, uh, or we had stole the uh, survey that Troy done, and we, we put our electric rates in there, and we actually have the lowest electric rates in southwest Ohio, and that includes all the investor owns and the co-ops. So, um, you know, we're tied into generating plants, and, for example, one of our generating resources is the Fremont Combined Cycle Plant. It's a natural gas plant. Natural gas prices are, are historical lows right now, and the prices we're receiving power from that plant are are very low. And mm -hmm. so, yeah, our customers are benefiting from that. So. Anything else, commissioners? Anyone in the audience wish to address this resolution? If not, could I have a motion? So moved. Second. And moved and seconded to adopt resolution number R-160-15. Would the clerk please call the roll? 
Commissioner Martin. Aye. Commissioner Terry. Aye. Mayor Fess. Aye. Commissioner Wilson. Aye. Commissioner Vogt. Aye. Resolution number R-160-15 has been adopted. Resolution number R-161-15. A resolution retaining the services of Sawwell and Associates to provide professional consulting and engineering services for the power system. This is the final item that we typically ask for approval for so that uh, when we hit January 1st, we can jump right into business as usual. Sawwell and Associates has been providing professional engineering consulting services for the city for over 20 uh, years and during the upcoming year they'll continue to do the things they've done for us in the past they'll uh, allow us to, and work with us to update our long-range business plan if we have an opportunity to, to buy market power we'll uh, look to them for their evaluation of that and probably the biggest thing in the upcoming year will be uh, there's possibility for additional generation project projects that we may be participating in through American Municipal Power. So uh, uh, Solville's really an extension of the City of Piqua staff and they've done a really uh, good job for us over the years. I think one of the questions that typically could come up in the past during our energy board review of this contract is how do their rates compare and they, they actually compare very favorably to a lot of the other engineer, engineering consulting firms out there. So uh, they're also very competitive from a cost standpoint. Thank you, Ed. Commissioners. Anyone in the audience wish to speak for or against the resolution? Could I have a motion, please? Move, move to one. adopt number one, uh, R161-15. Second. Moved and seconded to adopt resolution number R-161-15. Would the clerk call the roll? Commissioner Terry? Aye. Mayor Fess? Aye. Commissioner Wilson? Aye. Commissioner Vogt? Aye. Commissioner Martin? Aye. Resolution number R-161-15 has been adopted. Resolution number R-162-15. A resolution authorizing a purchase order to Nelson Tree Service Incorporated for electric power line clearance. Okay, this next item is not an annual item. It's typically every three years because we'll bid this out and we'll ask for uh, the, the ability to extend the contract during the second and third year. We've had a relationship with Nelson now for some time. They've done a a commendable job for us and uh, as we received the bids this year Nelson and Asplin were very competitive but Asplin declined to do this uh, year two and year three and inf inflationary uh, adjustments so with the minor difference in, in cost and uh, Nelson's past performance we feel like it makes a lot of sense to continue the relationship with Nelson over the next over the next year for evaluation at the end of uh, 16 for continuation each of the following years thank you Ed Thanks. Commissioners, any questions of the power director? Does anyone in the audience wish to speak for or against the resolution? If not, could we have a motion? I move we adopt resolution R-162-15. Second. Been moved and second to adopt resolution number R-162-15. Would the clerk call the roll, please? Mayor Fess? Aye. Commissioner Wilson? Aye. Commissioner Vogt? Aye. Commissioner Martin? Aye. Commissioner Terry? Aye. Resolution number R-162-15 has been adopted. Resolution number R-163-15. A resolution acquiring Power System Engineering Incorporated to provide professional services to the city. This next item is actually something that we've been uh, talking about for a number of years is automated meter reading. You know, a lot of cities around the state and country have already implemented automated meter metering programs. And uh, really the reason why we think it's a good time now is the water department uh, received a grant to replace a number of meters. And rather to do that in isolation, we think it makes sense to, to look at implementing a program uh, citywide for all the utilities. So what this resolution would do would allow us to enter into a professional services agreement with power system engineering uh, to allow us to basically evaluate the alternative options out there and uh, provide some recommendations and determine what our course of action should be to implement uh, such a program in the city. I had that power system engineering is a company that we've worked with in the past. They provide all the engineering for the transmission line rebuilds uh, starting uh, when the day reco windstorm knocked our part of our transmission line down. They, they provide a number of, of engineering services and they also recently completed a tech, technology work plan for the, uh, 
the power system that was reviewed with our energy board, and this really is one of the key components of the uh, long-term technology plan that they've uh, developed for us. Thank you. Commissioners, any questions? When, when, uh, when we go to read these new meters, are, are they going to be read from the street or would they be from a central area or how would that work? Yeah, so, you know, part of what this, this process looks, looks at is, is you go out and you develop the alternative bender, vendors and suppliers and then you come back with the best solutions. But really, all those solutions are going to be ones where you're not going to see people driving around the streets. They're going to be collecting readings through towers or maybe the, the meters will be communicating with each other and bringing the data back to the city. So it's really, uh, as far as the manpower, there's no manpower associated with collecting the, uh, the readings. It's all done through the communication network. Now, what type of communication network is still to be seen, you know, as we evaluate the alternatives? So okay. this allows us to, you know, eliminate going into people's homes and, and all the things that, you know, they don't want us to do, we don't want it to do. And it's uh, accuracy. I mean, there's just so many benefits from an AMI program. And uh, this is really just to, to kick off this process. And the grant requires that we have the, the new water meters in place by 2017. So by doing this now, it gives us a nice manageable schedule for implementation of an AMI program. This engineering would be in place by the time we're ready to uh, use the grant money to right. So this this the meters this, and this contract would allow us to evaluate the alternatives and, and then enter into a contract in a timely manner to make sure that and not only those water initial water meters installed, we would probably install electric meters at the same time. But you know all that all the details of that still are yet to be determined through this process. Great. Thank you. Anyone else? Anyone in the audience wish to speak for or against this resolution? If not, could I have a motion, please? Move to adopt resolution R-163-15. Second. Moved and seconded to adopt resolution number R-163-15. Would the clerk call the roll, please? Commissioner Wilson? Aye. Commissioner Vogt? Aye. Commissioner Martin? Aye. Commissioner Terry? Aye. Mayor Fess? Aye. Resolution number R-163-15 has been adopted. Resolution number R-164-15. A resolution amending the total payment to Sulcer Turbo Services for the required repairs to the number nine gas turbine. Okay, so as, if we've, as we've talked in the past, the city owns and operates two combustion turbines. You know, they're, they're stri strategic, strategic assets for the city. They're, they're older uh, vintage machines. The uh, Number eight gas turbine that we repaired a few years ago was 1970 unit. This is actually 1965 that was bought, used from a Canadian utility, and moved to Piqua. Uh, one of the things we found when we were doing the work on the uh, number eight gas turbine, the, G, the GE unit, is we had difficulty uh, uh, getting insurance coverage because this Westinghouse, the number nine gas turbine, had never had an overhaul. It, the case had never been opened on this unit, and, and we knew this was a large ticket item that we had out there, but uh, and we were looking for the right time to do it. And, uh, and now that the values that we're returning to our customers in terms of the economic benefits, you know, right now we're saving our customers in excess of $1.6 million in our power bills because we have these gas turbines available as capacity and they're also there as a peak shaving resource. It's really important that uh, we bring this unit up to the same condition as our number eight gas turbine. And uh, Salzer Turbo Services is the same company we used on our uh, GE unit a few years ago, and um, the unit uh, was uh, shipped to the, uh, their uh, shop in Texas and basically opened up, inspected, and a repa repair plan was developed. And this was all part of the process because we really had no idea what the magnitude of the repairs. We had a general feeling. I mean, we spent close to $3 million on our General Electric unit. This, this unit uh, is in a little worse condition, so. Uh, uh, basically, what we want to do is bring this unit in the same condition as our number eight gas turbine, and so we can ensure we've got reliable operation of these two units into the future. Thank you, commissioners. So, even though we're spending a lot of money on these turbines, uh, we still think it's cost effective to our customers to keep them running uh, yes, as backup. From a number of standpoints, I mean, like I said, when you look at the, the savings on the power bill. This investment in this unit is probably a two-year payback uh, based on that. But in addition to that, 
If you were to buy generation the size of the unit that we're working on, you're looking at five times the cost of this. Oh. So the, the fact that it's permitted, it's located in Piqua, it's a resource that provides, you know, we can use both of these units right now. We can black start our general, general electric unit and bring this unit online and we can, uh, in the winter, we could probably carry two thirds of the city's load with these two units, which, you know, I, I've got to think in the next few years, that's going to be a very important thing for the city. After um, these are brought up to today's standards, uh, will we be able to get insurance for them? That's our hope. If that's okay. So we'd still have to go shopping for it. Uh, we had an underwriter through Maverma for the policy, and we know um, it's unlikely to get that coverage again. The problem is if one of these goes down, it's such an enormous mm -hmm. claim for them. Um, so right now we have our insurance through Aegis on the dams, and the hope is that we could get coverage through Aegis, uh, but it's a very difficult piece of equipment to get coverage on nationwide just because of any type of claim is such an outstanding amount. When the last turbine went down, we had coverage. We paid $2,500 for a $3 million claim. Wow. Mm. That's the problem. So we will do everything we can to get coverage, and we've been working on it, and this has been part of the plan to make that improvement towards getting the coverage. Would that be a very expensive rate, though? I mean, would it would it offset, or, I mean, could we even like self-insure it or I mean that's basically what we've fund, been doing right now has fund. been self-insuring the units okay you know I mean we can't guarantee we'll get coverage if we do it at, at an economic rate it'll be a, a plus mm -hmm. but either way these units are going to be a condition that we can operate them I mean uh, when we had the polar vortex a few years ago uh, January uh, uh, not this year but the year back and we ran the general electric unit it was 26 below zero and it was the only reason we could do that is because of the 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 maintenance work that we did on the units. These units have essentially not had very many dollars spent on them since the time they've been brought to, to the city. And part of the reason why was these markets didn't exist to where you got this economic benefit that you, we get right now. So, you know, previous management, did, we didn't invest in them because there wasn't an economic benefit to do that. There wasn't as much thought was that, that the grid's going to go dark. Well, you know, they continue to shut down power plants, and that's a possibility. So... Mm -hmm. I mean, just for all the reasons, every every manager that I work with in the utilities, if you have generation behind the meter, you, you want to do everything you can do to maintain it. Now, you're not going to spend a ridiculous amount of money, but this it's a lot of money, but in, in relationship to the cost of, of new units or in relationship to the economic benefits you give up, you know, it's well worth it. And, and we're in a position now we have cash reserves to cover it, so. Okay. And I think the point is, too, it's about, as Ed mentioned, it's about a two-year payback, which is pretty good. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Anyone in the audience wish to speak to this resolution? If not, could I have a motion, please? Move to adopt resolution number 164-15. Second. It's been moved and seconded to adopt <clears throat> resolution number 1R-164-15. Moving to resolution number R-165-15. I vote. Yeah, we need to vote. vote on oh, that. excuse me. I'm trying to get through it faster than we need to. Do. Commissioner <laughs> Vote. Aye. Commissioner Martin. Aye. Commissioner Terry. Aye. Mayor Fess. Aye. Commissioner Wilson. Aye. Thank you. Now we'll move to resolution number R-165-15. <clears throat> A resolution requesting authorization to enter into an agreement with emh and t for engineering design services uh, miss havener will provide the staff report on items 20 and 21. thank you this legislation would allow us to hire emh and t to um, begin the engineering design services on our garby road looney road intersection improvement project if you recall in 2013 the city commission authorized the city manager to apply for funding through the Miami Valley Regional Planning Commission. Um, we applied for CMAC funding, which can only be used specifically for projects that reduce emissions, which in turn improve the air quality. And we were successful in receiving a little over a million dollar grant for these improvements. Um, this project would involve the construction of a roundabout at the intersection of Garbury and Looney Road. And this legislation would allow us to go ahead and begin the detailed design of that project. Thank you, Amy. Commissioners, any questions of the? Do we know the um, total cost to the city to uh, do the roundabout, uh, approximately? 
Um, the estimate right now is approximately 1.4 million for construction. I mean, the cost to the city. Um, so about about uh, 400,000 for construction. 350 to 400,000. Yeah. 350 to 400. And that will come out of our street fund, correct? Correct. When the 103 fund, which right. is the project. Yeah, the street income tax, which we do our capital improvement projects out of. And what will we not do to fund this? This has been budgeted for a couple years, so I don't know that we're not necessarily not going to do anything. Yeah, typically, uh, we budget every year for various construction projects that are underway. This would be, for that particular year, uh, we would be doing that construction project. It would not be taken away from our street paving, right. normal street paving that we would do annually, which we have increased tremendously in the last couple years and will continue to do so because we do have uh, paving infrastructure issues that we need to address. So, but this is typically, we, we would be spending on an annual basis some major construction project, and this would be the project for that particular year. Okay. Anyone else? Uh, will, we, will we receive reports um, going along when I was when I was reading all this about the uh, engineering and it sounds like um, for instance if if they have to have uh, lighted areas if they have to have curbs and gutters or curbing or sidewalks pedestrian ways um, if ODOT comes comes in with um, their specifications um, before we go go on with each step Will, will we have some sort of written information to go by um, in this the, planning process? I guess the question you're asking is, uh, will the design be approved by ODOT? Yeah, so, I mean, you know, I, are there a lot of things that are, that are going to come that we wouldn't have, uh, uh, it wouldn't be our, our designation. I mean, it would be, for instance, things that ODOT wanted or things that other people wanted besides maybe the city. I think um, we things have that a, were out of our control. I think we have a pretty good handle on what ODOT's going to require, and the consultant that we're hiring, actually, um, one of the gentlemen that we're hiring, he used to work for ODOT, so he has a really good feel for what ODOT is requiring. So we're going into this with the knowledge of what they will require. There could be something, um, I guess, crazy that they ask for, but we don't foresee that happening. That, that's what I was kind of concerned about, whether there were things that we didn't see that they would require for us. Do we know if there's going to be any utilities offhand that are going to be moved? Um, not that we know of major right now. Um, our, our consultants here, Ed, I don't know if you want to speak on, come up and speak on that behalf. Gary, why does it say $180,000? Good evening, commissioners. Yeah. Mayor, Good thank evening. you for the invitation to be here this evening. In regards to the preliminary study and utility impacts, those are items that we look at very early on in the analysis from our initial site review. Obviously, there's aerial facilities, uh, there's underground facilities, AT&T has infrastructure within the corridor, uh, fiber optic lines, very typical of an infrastructure improvement project, items that we look at closely to step you through our process to let you know how we look at utilities and what would need to be moved. We start with an OOPS request, work closely with our utility contacts, both through the city as well as ODOT District 7, who would have oversight um, due to the funding from the CMAC eligibility for the project. We'll work through those items, work early on with utility companies to identify impacts, conflicts. Typically, from our perspective, we really want to minimize those impacts for schedule and costs, both to the project as well as to the utility themselves. And those are critical elements that we have to look at beginning today, to be honest with you. And so through each step of the design, utility coordination is at the front end of that work. Um, environmental, right away, and utilities. Those are your key elements to a project. Oftentimes, the bridge, the road, the sewer can be built. That's really not the hard part. It's working with all the other ancillary items that are important to the project. Yeah. Now, do you have any estimate of how much bigger the footprint will be for a roundabout there compared to the intersection that sits there now? You know, the size will vary based on the final geometrics. Fortunately, in this situation, there's adequate right away to work with. So we envision that any right-of-way takes or any needs would be relatively minimal. Um, but at this point, again, it's very preliminary. We haven't really jumped into the specific sizing of the roundabout. That hinges a lot upon the traffic volumes, the geometric requirements, the design parameters. 
but working from what's out there today, typically your footprint is a lot less than, say, a signalized intersection or, or an equivalent. Okay, all right, thank you. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? No. I think we're just very concerned about, you know, keeping our costs to a minimum and, and also not having surprises uh, coming down the road that yeah. would drive things up. Absolutely, and as Amy indicated, I was the individual that worked for the department for about eight years, so I spent, of my career, I spent close to 16 years in the public sector, both municipal and with ODOT, and certainly there's a sensitivity to that on both sides, and I feel from my own personal experiences working in the government, how important it is to really optimize available funding. Use what you have as resourceful as you can, but understand there's an end result and get there as efficiently as possible. And through the work of our company and the work that we've done for past clients, both public and private, that has to happen each step of the way. So one challenge that we put upon ourselves is to really value engineer each step. So as we begin the design, we just don't assume the end result. You have to understand the process to get there, and as you're developing the design, you're being efficient each step of the way. And our goal is if we have a stage one submittal and there's an X amount of dollars for an estimate, we sure should be looking for reductions by the time we get to stage two. We're not gonna assume stage one's correct. While the footprint is there, the design is correct, the utilities are being looked at, what can we do to further reduce design costs? And that's a challenge we have on a lot of projects with both public and private clients um, of all scales and magnitude. And that's something we hold very high and very dear to our own selves on how we can be efficient and give the best value to the client. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Any other questions? Yeah, will this be designed to let a truck drive over it if they can't maneuver around it? Yes, we look very closely at the vehicles, both from a uh, large scale vehicle such as a truck including uh, fire safety vehicles. Uh, for a recent project we did with the city of Canal Winchester, that was very critical, uh, making sure that school buses, large scale uh, fire safety vehicles, um, large shipping trucks could, could navigate the roundabout. We are successful in doing that. And we have templates and tools and utilities that we use to analyze those situations. And in doing so, we can give visual graphics um, both to the community as well as to the city both on a two-dimensional level as well as a three-dimensional level. So it's easy to visualize and see where we are today and where we'll be in the future. But yes, that can be accomplished. And how long will it take uh, for this to be a safer intersection since I assume when we first put it in, we'll have an unsafe one because we're not used to it. But how long does a curve take before we don't have crashes there because of this? A lot of it becomes public education from day one. And that's very important, and that's something we emphasized in our technical approach to the city. When you institute an infrastructure change, it could be a small change, it could be a big change, it could be a signal, it could be a stop condition, it could have any element of a, of a traffic improvement. And as the design engineer, we have to make sure that we're both communicating our ideas to the public and to the client, and in this case, that's both. The public is our client. And we have to be sure that as we design the project and what that final improvement is, that we're educating the city, we're providing the tools, the utilities, and we have several examples where we've done that for other cities to educate the public so they're aware of what this improvement will be, what the benefit will be, what the safety improvement is for the, for the public traveling through this intersection, how to navigate it. Um, at the end of the day, there's a, there's a great improvement planned and scheduled, but it's how we educate each step of the way with the public and, and help them understand how to navigate it. But in your experience, the initial attempts of people will be shaky because they won't know what they're doing. You know, I think every situation is different. Um, again, I'll, I'll fall back to the city of Canal Winchester, uh, Jenner Road Phase 3. It was a very similar project funded in Central Ohio through Morpsey, uh, ODOT District 6, very much a, a carbon copy of this project. And there was a lot of concern from the city leadership from the community about how safe this would be, how hard is it gonna be for people to navigate uh, the roundabout. And at the ribbon cutting, we had fire trucks go through, we had school buses go through, we had people actually access it with a high success rate. It's been wonderful. Uh, everyone adapted to it quite easily. And it was the first roundabout in the city of Canal. While there were others in the central Ohio region, there weren't any in Canal. And that was a big concern. A lot of community uh, individuals, uh, representatives, uh, city leadership wanted to make sure it was going to be safe and that it was gonna work and we were successful in accomplishing that. So it was a, it was a slow, quick 
I guess I'll say a, a quick learning curve from the vehicles we're able to navigate through it without any concerns or problems. Because we don't have a safety issue now, that's why I was wondering. Certainly. Well, anybody who, I think, Joe, who has driven in communities outside of the city of Piqua has encountered roundabouts. So, I mean, it's not going to be a, a, a total new thing for people. You know, I mean, we have been in many communities where there are roundabouts and, and people move through there and, and you adapt to it. So I, I can't see where that would create any more of a, an issue there for most people than you know, as the gentleman said, just a learning curve that all, now you don't just stop there, you go in a roundabout. But everybody, surely everybody has been in a community where there's a roundabout. I, I think that, uh, I think it's important to understand that one of the, the main reasons for moving in this direction is the fact that yes, there's no major problems in that intersection currently, but uh, just south of that is our major industrial uh, development. Uh, lands that we are hoping we're going to uh, get some uh, commercial businesses, industrial businesses in there. Uh, that, although that intersection currently, you know, functions okay, uh, and we don't have any real major issue. If that, if the vehicular traffic increases by 140 percent, that intersection is going to be in failure. And if it's in failure, then we've got to we've got to redesign the the complete intersection. So. At this point, that's, we're, we're kind of looking ahead and trying to take opportunity of the grants that are available to us, uh, the CMAC that's available to do roundabouts, and getting ahead of the curve because uh, we, we want to make sure that we have that intersection um, very safe by the utilization of the roundabout so that we can move the volumes of traffic that will be, we're anticipating to come in there uh, for the type of vehicles and so forth that we're anticipating in that area. So. Uh, we're, we're trying to be very proactive and uh, utilize some known successes uh, as roundabouts uh, to um, address any future congestion or uh, traffic mitigation issues. So I, th I think that's kind of what we're looking at and why we're doing this. I know there's been some question about why would we do that now with not that much traffic, but you're going to have traffic there and we better get ahead of it now or we're going to have a tremendous problem and really have some uh, serious safety issues uh, in, the, in the near future. Yeah, and, and looking at many of the projects that are on our drawing boards today, they're not, or that we have in place now, they're not things that are going to be necessarily required or, or needed right now, but what we want to do is look to the future. And as Gary said, with the developmental land being mainly in that area, Hopefully, this is going to be something, as he said, we need to get ahead of because, uh, I, you know, I know there's people looking at that and saying, you know, what in the world are we doing this for? We don't need that. No, we don't need it today, but hopefully within five years, we will need it. And so I, th I think it's a s smart move when we have an opportunity to get that much grant money to help build this to go ahead and, and get it done. So. And also one of the big advantages of a roundabout is the fact that there are no people turning left in front of another car. Because yeah. it makes it so there's no, there's no, con takes away contact points. Yeah, the contact points actually go down on a four-way intersection. The contact points for accidents are 32 as compared to eight in a, a roundabout. So, I mean, that's, that's, that's a known fact and that's, we, that's a known safety issue that we've, uh, we've experienced. So, uh, e even if you had to, uh, if you didn't do this now and you had to do something in future years, you might have to do a roundabout anyway to uh, meet the traffic issues that uh, would be presented out there. Well, and we just want to remind people, too, that our city manager, our current city manager, has had a great deal of experience in dealing with uh, this type of traffic control in other communities that he's worked in, and he's seen the results of it. So uh, um, he's not led us wrong on the wrong path so far, so we've got to uh, look to his experience as to being a, an example of uh, why we need to do this. Any other questions, commissioners? Thank you so very much. Thank, Thank you, you for being here. Okay. Is there anyone else in the audience that would speak to this issue?
Good evening, I'm Valerie Mulligan. I do not currently live in the city limits, however, I use services in that area that you're talking about. Um, while I can see the, uh, the big picture of a roundabout there, I'm concerned about putting the cart before the horse. Um, it's my understanding that Garvey Road out to 36 East is part of the city limits, is that correct? Does anybody know? No. Gar Garby no. Road, does it, we, is that all part of Piqua City Limits out past Allison Manor, Bent Tree, et cetera? Is that road? Do we know? Paul, I can't no. remember. It goes out pretty far, but I'm not sure. I, I'm, I'm curious because that road is in horrible, horrible condition. Absolutely horrible condition. Um, I, I go out to the Neuro Rehab Center, the Han Huff and Hufford mm -hmm. uh, Rehab Center several days a week. And I just can't get over the condition of the road. So my concern would be, we're kind of putting the cart before the horse and putting this roundabout in. Um, I, I get that we need to do it at some point. I totally get it. And I, I do think that it'll be an, ad, uh, an advantage to that area. But we've got uh, um, south on Looney, we have a very sharp curve in there that's going to make traffic different. You're going to have to restructure that section of road are you going to combine that with this roundabout and do it all at one time which makes it more appealing to somebody who wants to develop down that way or are we going to do this in piecework and have to keep reapplying for additional grants to sustain and to fund additional infrastructure changes out there well we're, we're just now getting into the design phase this is what this would be to address all those issues I would anticipate that we're going to do the project to a quality that you know, it doesn't have to be sustained after that. Mm -hmm. um, and speaking of the Garbury Road, we have a lot of roads that need paving, and we're going to be paving those. That's one of <laughs> our, you our guys are doing it. I, I believe me, I see it. I'm we, so appreciative. Green Street got done, but we, I'm we concerned were, we are the about first that. First, to admit that there's a lot of paving that needs to be done, and we've got way behind on it, um, and we are making every effort to do as much paving as we can each year now, we've, this is about the third year, and each year we've done more and more, and we'll continue to do that till we get the city in a condition that we're all proud of. I, I Believe me, I, I do definitely see it. I am very appreciative of the work that is getting done. I'm concerned that we're, we're not looking far enough out from that roundabout. Well, I, I think we are, Valerie, all. actually. Uh, I mean, I think all of those things are on the drawing board. I don't think it's just piecemeal. I, I think the whole area is being looked at. So I don't think you need, you, you don't have to be concerned about that. We'll, we'll certainly take your, your comments to heart. And are you talking about from Looney Road out past Scarberry Ridge and, and Han, is that yes. the road that's really bad? It, yes, in front of Alliston Manor, the Neuro Rehab Center, Bed Tree Apartments, yeah. et cetera. Um, Amy, do we have any idea where, what, no, I'm sorry, I don't mean to put you on I the know spot. some of that's in and some of that's in the county, but I don't know the exact limits. Okay. I, I'm not sure either, and I, I just know that that section of the road is, is in such dis... I watched a school bus the other day driving down that road, hitting, school, hitting potholes and actually tilting to the side, and I'm thinking, mm. this poor kid's going to Spring Creek School right now. That's not good. Well, we're, we're still doing potholes, and we will continue <laughs> to fill potholes all You're year. You're fortunate. You've had a good winter so far. <laughs> well, we, we can produce some of our own asphalt, and we're going to continue to um, fill potholes throughout the year. So, well, and, uh, I, and I appreciate that, but, I mean, I also know that we can fill potholes till, we, till we're blue in the face. That does not replace the foundation that's falling apart creating those potholes and that is a big concern. And we understand that because that's why we've started doing full depth reclamation projects and that Green Street and some of those projects those right. are full depth, depth and those have to be done to fix the base we understand that. Right. So we, uh, we're doing both from a contractual and an internal paving program now so we're, we're trying to knock off streets as quickly as we can. All right wonderful thank you. Thanks Valerie. Anyone else? If not, um, could I have a motion? So moved. Second. It's been moved and second to uh, adopt resolution number R-166-15. Would the clerk please call the roll? Commissioner Martin. Aye. Commissioner Terry. Are we on 65 or 66?
65. I'm sorry. Excuse me. Commissioner Terry? Aye. Mayor Fess? Aye. Commissioner Wilson? Nay. Did he say nay? Nay. <coughs> nay. Yeah. And Commissioner Vote? Aye. Uh, the motion has passed, a resolution has passed on a vote of four to one. Uh, we will move now to resolution number R-166-15. A resolution authorizing preliminary legislation with the Ohio Department of Transportation for the programming of an intersection improvement project in the city of Piqua. As with all of our projects um, that we do receive grant funding for, we have to program them with ODOT, and this is just their standard um, legislation that would allow us to program it so we can begin the design. Thank you, Amy. Commissioners, any questions for Amy? Well, you know, we were we were talking about the um, the traffic, but if we go ahead with the design um, before we, I mean, previous to what's hoped to be economic development in the area, um, there shouldn't be a lot of traffic change for the short term. Is, am I crazy or is that what I'm thinking? The consultant will actually do traffic projections based on the um, land use plan and what's available land out there. So they will anticipate future growth um, based on industrial development and commercial development so they will take that into account when they do the design of the roundabout. Mm -hmm. But I'm thinking too that we would have also time to improve roadways that are oh, adjacent correct. and, and uh, near that area. Yeah. Okay. Anyone else? Anyone in the audience wish to speak for or against? If not, could I have a motion please? So moved. Second. It's moved and seconded to adopt resolution number R-166-15. Would the clerk call the roll? Commissioner Terry. Aye. Mayor Fess? Aye. Commissioner Wilson? Nay. Nay. Commissioner Boat? Aye. Commissioner Martin? Aye. Resolution number R-166-15 has passed on a vote four to one. Resolution number R-167-15. A resolution authorizing purchase orders to Chemical Services Incorporated, the Mississippi Lime Company, F2 Industries, Air Products and Chemicals, Water Solutions Unlimited, and the City of Dayton for the 2016 purchase of various water treatment chemicals. I'm going to presume Mr. Jennings is going to present the staff reports tonight. Thank you. This is just a yearly business that we do after budget each year where we have to come before commission um, for the purchase of certain chemicals that we use in the treatment process for the water. Uh, we do in-house bid ourselves through the city and then we also use a cooperative bid through Montgomery County with other communities that allows us to get um, some better pricing for certain chemicals. Um, so this is just like, so we can uh, have the chemicals for next year. Thank you, Bob. Um, any other questions for? Um, is the cost of the chemicals kind of in line with last year? Has it gone up or down or? Um, actually, our bids came in. We, we project typically a 5% increase across the board for the chemicals. All of them uh, this year came in under that except for one, and um, that was our uh, CO2, our carbon dioxide. And um, we kind of projected and knew that that was going to go up, and we did have a major increase in that chemical due to um, the supplier that we've had for the past two years out of Greenville, Ohio, is no longer producing carbon dioxide. Um, so therefore we had to go out for, to try and find somebody else because they've been the only one that's bid on our, for the last two years. And our reason behind that is we have a very small storage vessel. So the large companies don't like to mess with us because it's just not cost effective for them to do so. Um, so we kind of knew that this year we were going to have to pay our higher premium, which, um, we, we did end up having to do that for that chemical. So, so we were able to find a supplier though. We did, yeah. We actually we ended up with two bids. Earlier. Yeah, we in the budget meeting we did talk about that. We did end up with two bids, one from a major supplier, then one from a sub supplier, so to speak. Um, and the major supplier was cheaper. So when we get to the new plant, we will have a, a 25 ton vessel, which will allow us to get a full truck to come in. So that'll bring our price back down, you know, to where it needs, or what we like it to be, I guess I should say, so. Okay, and then you already answered my other question about whether we could bid with other cities, and, and you said we, we did have that option. Right, yeah, we do that. Thank you. Thank you, Bob. 
Any other questions? Anyone in the audience wish to speak for or against this resolution? If not, do we have a motion? I move we adopt resolution R-167-15. It's been moved and seconded to adopt resolution <coughs> number R-167-15. Second. Was there a second? <laughs> Yeah, we had a second. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's all right, Judy. Yeah, it's a long night. Yeah. <laughs> I Would didn't hear roll, it. Please? Mm -hmm. Mayor Fess? Aye. Commissioner Wilson? Aye. Commissioner Vogt? Aye. Commissioner Martin? Aye. Commissioner Terry? Aye. Resolution number R-167-15 has been adopted. Resolution number R-168-15. A resolution awarding a contract to Polcat Incorporated in the amount of not to exceed $150,000 annually for removal and disposal of lime residual from the City of Pickwell Water Plant Lime Lagoon <coughs> for 2016 through 2018. We do a three-year, uh, put out a bid for three years for the cleaning of our Lime Lagoon at, um, it's off of Pickle Lockington Road at our, at our quarry. And um, this year we went out for bid. We only had one company that actually bid on that. That is uh, Polcat Incorporated. And they've actually done the job for us actually over the past nine years. Um, we've been real happy with them. They do a great job. We budget $150,000 each year. And um, they come in and they're real good communicating with us when they reach that amount. Um, they bring their tickets in each, each day so we know where they stand. Um, we've had no issues with them over, you know, over the past nine years. So they do a great job of putting things back the way they were when they came in to do the work. And we just recommend going with them again for the next three years. So. Thank you, Bob. Commissioners, any questions? Anyone in the audience? If not, could we have a motion, please? Move to adopt resolution number R-168-15. Second. It's been moved and seconded to adopt resolution number R-168-15. The clerk call the roll. Commissioner Wilson? Aye. Commissioner Vogt? Aye. Commissioner Martin? Aye. Aye. Commissioner Terry? Aye. Mayor Fess? Aye. Resolution number R-168-15 has been adopted. Resolution number R-169-15. A resolution authorizing the city manager to enter into a business first intergovernmental cooperation agreement with Montgomery County and member jurisdictions. Mr. Summer will provide staff report for these last two items. The city of Piqua has participated in the business first program since 2005. This is a program that is designed to link businesses to resources within the greater Dayton region. This resolution would extend that agreement for five years. Uh, the Business First program is uh, an agreement between 30 member jurisdictions throughout multiple counties in the Dayton region, and it links us to over 100 community resources. Uh, this resolution would continue the City of Piqua's commitment to retention and expansion of existing businesses. There is a, a relatively minimal cost to the program of $1,500 annually. Uh, that cost is covered by our Grow Piqua Now uh, economic development group. Thank you, Justin. Commissioners, any questions? Anyone in the audience wish to speak for or against the resolution? If not, could I have a roll call, please? I need a motion. I'll move to adopt resolution R-169-15. Second. Second. It's been moved and seconded to adopt resolution number R-169-15. Would the clerk please call the roll? Commissioner Vogt? Aye. Commissioner Martin? Aye. Commissioner Terry? Aye. Mayor Fess? Aye. Commissioner Wilson? Aye. Resolution number R-169-15 has been adopted. Resolution number R-170-15. A resolution supporting the fiscal year 2016 United States Environmental Protection Agency Brownfields Cleanup Grant Program application. We're seeking approval to submit an application to the US EPA Brownfield Cleanup Grant. This is a $200,000 grant that would allow for asbestos abatement of the former Moe's Lounge at 111 South Main Street. As you recall, this was a, a property that was identified as a catalytic, catalytic property for the riverfront redevelopment. 
uh, through a previous brownfield assessment grant that we received from the US EPA, we were able to complete phase one and phase two environmental studies. Uh, through the phase two environmental study, uh, it identified roughly $268,000 worth of asbestos that needs to be abated. We are pursuing this grant to ready the property for redevelopment. We believe that once the asbestos is abated, uh, the property will be more uh, applicable and more ready for redevelopment through private development. Thank you, Justin. Commissioners, do you have questions? What's the timeline on the grant and when would it, uh, if approved, be completed? The, uh, the, we'll re submit the grant by the end of this week. We'll know by the end of the year uh, whether we move on to the formal review. Uh, there's a national review committee from the US EPA that will recommend us for funding. Uh, if approved for funding, uh, it's expected that we would receive the funds in September of next year. Uh, hopeful that we would get the funds before that, but uh, the plan would be for abatement in 2016, towards the end of 2016. So any potential development would be after that, obviously, right? Uh, we, we would hope that a potential developer um, would engage prior to then, which they have. Um, and we would hope that they would fund the asbestos abatement on their own, but it's unlikely that that would happen. So uh, it, not to say that work could not be done uh, prior to us receiving the grant and abating the asbestos, but it's likely that development won't happen until after that. Thank you. Anyone else? Anyone in the audience wish to speak for or against this resolution? If not, could we have a motion? I move we adopt resolution R-170-15. Second. It's been moved and seconded to adopt resolution number R-170-15. Would the clerk call the roll? Commissioner Martin. Aye. Commissioner Terry. Aye. Mayor Fess. Aye. Commissioner Wilson. Aye. Commissioner Vogt. Aye. Well, that was the resolution we were all looking forward to on this long agenda because it was the last one. <laughs> so uh, we'll now open the floor for public comment. Anyone who wishes to address the commission, please come to the podium in the center of the room and state your name and address. Seeing no one moving forward, I want to report that the monthly reports for, oh, oh excuse me, sir, come, come right ahead. First of all, I'd like to thank you, Lucy, Mayor Fess, for your years of service. Thank you. I appreciate it. My name is Stephen Mulliken. I'm with the VFW and the American Legion. On February 6th, we are hosting a combined remembrance event to honor the Vietnam and the Desert Storm veterans in recognition of the 50th and 25th anniversaries of the wars. This will be hosted at the VFW from 1 to 5 p.m. Again, that's on February 6th. Our goal is to honor these veterans and provide educational opportunities to include providing information on resources available to assist the veterans. We are seeking memorabilia on loan to display photos, and other such military items representing the time, these periods. This is a free event open to the general public, and we'd like the city to come on board and support our city veterans by dropping by the Remembrance event. We will have speakers, displays, raffles and door prizes, and I also have Pickwick City Schools on board, the art department. They're designing a logo um, for us to get on t-shirts so we can offer t-shirts for sale. I want, that way they're included in the event too. We are still looking for cash donations to offset the cost for food and decorations and there have been many businesses who have already donated many great items to be raffled. 
We're excited to remember those who have served in honor for our nation. Thank you. If you have any questions, you can see me afterwards. And any donations of memorabilia and anything, I would like in by January 16th. And, and where should they drop these off at the VFW? Or? That they can do my contact information. There's, they can drop them off at the Legion. They can drop them off at the VFW. Okay. And, and they can. They are on loan. They, they will go back to whoever dropped the them off. Thank you so much. And and I'm sure that the city is want to, going to want to be involved in that in in a way. So um, if if you would like a proclamation in honor of this. If you would get information to the city manager's office, I know they'll be glad to take care of that for you and let us know what else you need. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? If not, we'll move now to the city manager's report. Uh, thank you, and I think it's only appropriate that I just have a few comments uh, related to your tenure as, as mayor. Um, I, I am very appreciative and very thankful that I had the opportunity to work with you, Mayor, and uh, through these years. I, I think that uh, I think one of the most memorable things is during the interview process and in, in coming, making decision to come here. Uh, I think one of the things that really, really uh, led me to want to come to pick what was in talking with you and the dedication, the love, the enthusiasm uh, that you had for the city and just. It came across very clearly that you had a tremendous desire to really improve the community and do good things for the community, and, and I was very impressed uh, by that. So that is um, one of the key things that led me here, and I have really appreciated uh, working just a little over four years, but it's been, it's been great, and I just wanted you to, to know that personally. Uh, from me tonight, so thank you very much. Well, thank you, Gary, and we are so fortunate, and if I had any small part in bringing you to Piqua, I'm eternally grateful for that because you have done an outstanding job over these four years. Thank you. Anything else? That's all I have today. We'll go to Commissioner Wilson then. Um, Sunday, we I was at a Christmas concert at the Plaza. I was sponsored by the Friends of the Library. I had a Lima Symphony was there. It was really well done. Um, of course, uh, Ruth Kuhn, of course, had her hand in this. She was the leader of that group, and she did a great job along with everyone else at the Friends of the Library. So I um, just wanted to thank that whole group for putting that on, and it was really well done. Um, as far as Lucy goes, um, <laughs> we are definitely going to miss you, Lucy. And I remember back in the early 90s, we started doing this stuff with the city. And then in the, around 2010, we started doing it again. And, and so I figure around 2030 or so, we may have to come back for another round. <laughs> so we I'll give you a call. About that, I'll give you a call and we'll see how, how okay. it works. Okay. And, uh, but I do appreciate uh, everything you've done and um, hope you'll have fun. And occasionally, I'm sure you'll. Uh, Tune in on Tuesdays and just relax and, <coughs> and be glad you're there and not here. So Well, I, I appreciate that, Joe. I really do. And we do. We, we have been hanging around here for quite a long while, right. you and I. Recycling's good. Yeah, that's mm. right. Yeah. yeah, that's all I have. Commissioner Terry. <coughs> well, I didn't recycle with you this way, but we used to hang around the, the tennis courts and pick up guys after the tennis matches. I do <laughs> remember right. that. <laughs> That's right. We still got them, too. Yeah, by golly. They hung out, hung out with us. Uh, so we will miss you, and, and I thank you for your service and wish you well in your retirement. And you know, uh, we wish you the very, very best. And, and uh, you've, you've been great to work with during the time that I've been sitting on this commission. So thank you. Thank you, Judy. Uh, and I wish everybody a Merry Christmas and a Happy New yes. Year, too, while, while we're talking about <laughs> Thank you so much. We'll go to Commissioner Martin. Um, well, I want to wish everybody a Merry Christmas, and Happy New Year. Um, and Lucy, have a wonderful retirement, and it's been an honor to work with you. Thank you, John. Thank you. Commissioner Vogt? Lucy, thank you very much. You're very welcome. For your service. And as John said, it's been an honor. I respect you fully. You've done it great job for us. 
Thank you. Thank you. Good luck to you and Bob. Bob, you're going to have to find something for her to do on <laughs> Tuesday now. <laughs> so uh, you two have a, have a good retirement together. Thank you so and, uh, much. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year to everybody. Thank so. you. Well, gosh, this has been a very emotional evening for me from 5 o'clock on, you know, and I want to I appreciate all the people who stopped by to say hello and, and to wish me <coughs> Godspeed, and, and you don't know how much that means, but it was great. And this being my last commission meeting, there are several people I'd like to recognize before I leave office. First, you, the citizens of the city of Piqua, for your confidence and support in allowing me to represent our city as its mayor. Without your help and support, I could never have experienced this adventure, and it truly has been an exciting adventure and a wonderful learning experience. You have enabled me to grow and evolve as a person, and in turn, I hope that I've been able to help our city move forward in a positive way. Three men that I would like to recognize for their patience, professionalism, and dedication over the years our former city managers, Frank J. Patrizio and Fred Enderley, and our current city manager, Gary Huff. These gentlemen have taught me so much about the workings of municipal government and have always had my back whenever things got tough. Thanks, my friends. You've made me a better person. Bill, John, Judy, and, and excuse me, Bill, John, Judy, and Joe, it's been a pleasure working with you, and I wish you much success as you continue to bring to fruition the many exciting projects and plans that are underway and will be occurring in our city in the near future. Pickle is certainly on an upward spiral, and with your leadership and that of our new mayor, Casey Hines, I feel sure we are heading into an exciting time as we witness a new revitalization that is going to occur in our city in the near future one that has been a long time coming. I certainly would be remiss if I didn't mention the help and support I have received from the staff of the city of Piqua. They are one of the finest, most professional, and dedicated groups of people I've ever met. Over the years, I have grown to know them not only as city employees, but as dear friends, and I will miss the regular interaction that I've shared with them. Thanks each and every one of you for your help and support over the years. One lady in particular whose efforts often go unnoticed because of her unassuming demeanor and humble approach to her job as the backbone of the Piqua City Commission. And of course, I mean our clerk of commission, Becky Cool. Becky, you've always been there whenever there was a need, going far beyond your job description to make sure the commission runs smoothly. You and your husband, Steve, who's in the back room there, sending us out over the airwave, show your love of Piqua, and it shows so much in the outstanding job that you do for so many. There have been several people who have supported me unconditionally from the first time I sought public office. You know who you are, my dear friends, and I thank you for always being there to support me. In particular, I want to mention Cliff and Joyce Alexander. Whenever the city had a need that we could not support, I would pick up the phone and call my friends, the Alexanders. Whether it be a check to purchase a dilapidated hotel that the city turned, created into something spectacular, the need to replace playground equipment that was unsafe, the seed money to begin the Renew Piqua program to help paint houses of those persons who could not afford to themselves, or just to re provide a red and white convertible, Thunderbird convertible, for me to ride in in parades. They would get the job done. In my estimation, every town would be blessed to have a Cliff and Joyce Alexander in their midst. And finally, my family. I'm lucky to have a husband who has always been supportive of all my efforts, and without him, I could have not accomplished half the things I have been able to do. He and my children have been my number one cheerleaders over the years, and I love them all to pieces. 
In parting, I just want to say God bless each of you, and God bless the city of Pickwell, Ohio. I wish you a Merry Christmas season and a blessed and happy New Year. Thank you, and I'll ask for a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. We're adjourned.